Welcome to the Writer's Room for Run Radio. My name is Turner Wilcox and my guest, Vic, it's a Ferrari. Yes, Vic Ferrari. All right, Ferrari. Okay, yes. Um, well, I was I was a little caught a little off guard. I thought I knew where you were residing, but you're not where I thought you were. So tell everybody where you spend most of your time and what your writing process is like. So after a 20 year career with the New York City Police Department, I had an up in New York City. I'm a Bronx kid, born and raised. Um, I had a wonderful 20 year career with the New York City Police Department. After I retired, I moved down to Del Boca Vista in sunny Florida. And um, my writing process is, well, I'll, I'll explain to you. I, I got into writing because I was bored out of my mind. Um, a 20 year career with the New York City Police Department is like a merry-go-round. You've got your ups, you got your downs, but you got to know when to leave and get off that ride because if you don't, eventually you're going to outlive your usefulness and Seabiscuit's going to throw you on your head. So I got out, I moved down to Florida and I was bored. Um, at the encouragement of friends and family, they said, you know, you got all these wild stories and you're involved in all these things. You should really start writing it down. And I said, yeah, I don't know. And I said, well, if I'm going to get into writing books, especially about my former career, the two things I didn't want to do was get anybody divorced or in trouble. So my books, although the stories are true, I move things around. So events, dates, times, locations, like if you've ever seen like the end of a uh, Law and Order episode, it says no person in this story depicted is, but I mean, you just saw it on the news like six months ago where they got the story from. Inspired by. Exactly. Right. So as a first time writer, um, I don't write in chronological order. I'm not that talented. As you can tell, I'm a little scatterbrained. So what I do is when I'm going to write a book, I, I have some ideas and I go to what's going to be fun for me to write. Like the most difficult thing for me to write about is an opening of a book and about the author. Those are the two things I struggle with. So I'll think of a story that I know is going to be the headliner of the book that's really going to grab the, um, the reader's attention. And it's going to be fun for me to write because it's something that, that I enjoyed in my life. And I just go with that. And I, I dedicate probably an hour or two a day to writing. I mean, you have to be disciplined when you're a writer. If you don't, it's just, especially a first time writer, it's just going to go by the wayside. You're going to frustrate yourself and you're going to wind up walking away from it. Um, I, I do probably 20 minutes in the morning, probably about an hour in the afternoon, and then I'll come back to it in the evening. It's just, that's my process. It's um, my brain, I think works differently at different times of the day. Um, I, I think I'm a better editor in the evening. It's like everything's up and running. Whereas in the morning, it's like, hey, I got an idea and boom, 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 boom. And then I'll grow it. So, do you try not to edit in the very beginning? Do you try just to spit it all out and then come back to it? Yeah, yeah. Because like, and, and I, so for first time writer, I also suggest having multiple notepads. I've got one in the living room. I've got one by my bed table. I've got one in the car. I got one out in the garage in case I'm work. Because I'll come up with an idea or something will remind me of something. I'm like, you know, this will fit in this story. Or you know what? This will be great for a chapter. And I'll just jot it down. Because if you sit there and say, oh, I'll get to it, you'll never get to it. Yeah. So what about publishing? What's that been like for you? What route did you go? And how did you choose that route? Sure. Um... I was not, I'm not a patient person and mm -hmm. I knew if I would have gotten a manuscript together and mailed it out to countless publishing houses, I probably wouldn't have taken the rejection well if I even heard back from these people because, you know, look at it from their end. You've got some person sitting there with a stack of manuscripts on their desk and if they pick the wrong one, they're out of a job. So, and it also depends on what's going on, what's hot at that time, you know, what's, what's going on in the world where this book will sell. So what I did was I got my manuscript together and uh, I found a great company. Um, it, it's a legit one. A lot of first time authors get burned. You'll go on the internet and you want to pub self publish a book and it'll say, give us 5,000, give us $10,000, mail us your manuscript and we're going to do everything for you. <laughs> yeah. They're going to take you for a nice long ride. Yeah. Not only do you have a partner now, right? They're not going to do your marketing. They say they are, but the reality is for a self-published author, you've got to do all the heavy lifting. Don't depend on somebody else to do it because it's not their baby and they're not going to push that ball over the goal line. So what I did was I got my manuscript together 
This ebooklaunch.com is a, it's like an a la carte service. So first and foremost, I, I've got, a, I've got a title for my book and I want a book cover. So I describe to them what I want. So for my book, NYPD Lauren Disorder, I sent them an email and I described, I want a police car, New York City police car involved in some type of accident. I want a cop outside the car scratching his head and I want the bad guy running away. Great. They created it. They do the back of the book jacket. It's 500 bucks for book for a, a paperback version and an ebook version. Then, then you've got to get it edited. Don't rely on your sister who is an English teacher or your uncle who's a professor at a university. I'm telling you, spend the, if you really want to be successful self-publishing books, you, you've got to find a professional editor and you've got to run your book through at least two rounds of edits, especially for a first time author. So you have to have a good copy edit. And what a copy edit does is it's grammar, sentence structure. But before you even send your book off for, for a copy edit, there's two different types of software that I run my manuscript through. First, I run it through Grammarly, right? That's about 150 bucks a year. Then after Grammar, Grammarly, I'll dump it in uh, Pro Writing Aid. That's another good one for sentence structure because you know what you're saying, but these apps, although they're not the Bible, they'll give you suggestions to make your stories more concise because you don't want to just hand your ma a half-assed manuscript to, to a copy editor because the better, tighter the script is, the better, tighter they can give it to you. If you give them garbage, they're going to give you half of garbage. So you have to give them something really well written. Once you get your copy edit back, you send it to a proofread. Proofread is more just cleaning things up to see what the copy edit missed. Once that's done, now you've got this manuscript. Great. How am I going to get it on the Amazon platform? Well, it's got to be formatted. So what, what you have to do is, and again, ebook launch does the whole thing for about 200 bucks. You're going to need two files if you're going to go with an ebook version for your book and a paperback. So what the ebook launch does is they take your, your edited file and they make it all nice. They do the fonts. They, they line everything up. So when the reader gets it, it's not all cattywampus. It actually looks like a book. So for me, a self-published book takes me a year. And from the time I start writing till the day I upload the formatted version is, is about a year. And all in, it's for me, it's about 2,500 bucks. Wow. And how many have you done now? Um, I'm writing my seventh now. That's exciting. So what do you do? When, do you hit the wall or are you pretty good at constantly having endless stories and ideas? Luckily for me, I haven't run out of stories yet. And a lot of my friends, my former retired cop friends and detectives, they'll reach out to me and say, you know, I love that story you wrote about that guy. But did you remember his partner? Remember when he got himself involved? And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, I do. I do remember that guy. So right now, no, I haven't run out of stories. But uh, but I do hit right writer's block. Oh, absolutely. Like, I know it's like, it's like the end of a Seinfeld episode. You want to tie everything <laughs> in, in, in together and everything makes sense. And it's funny for the reader. You know, I write comedy. I mean, although my stories are a lot of things are dark, I try to have like a gallows humor and tie everything together. Um, what do you what do you do when uh, or do you ever get to that point where you're like, is this how the story went? Do you have to rewrite it sometimes and fill in some gaps or are you always Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so what I'll do is I'll run through my book. So like right now I'm writing a book. I don't have a name for it, but right now I'm writing an NY themed, NYPD themed book. Right. And I'm about 10 chapters. So what I do is through it and then I'm like, OK, now I start again. Like the process is I just keep going back to the top and then coming down the chapters. And, you know, sometimes a chapter could take a month of me going through it. I'm like this. Here's another thing I do before I send it to, to an author. One of the last things I do is, and this, I, I've got a 120 pound Irish wolfhound in my house and this drives <laughs> nuts to no end. I read it out loud. Oh, hey, that is not stupid at all because I have, I can tell you as someone that has read scripts for other people, whether it be a short snippet, you can tell when no one has reread what they've written. 
-hmm. and it either it's clumsy or doesn't make sense coming back out. So I'm, I'm glad you said how important that is. Oh, it's like I'm doing Shakespeare in the park. So I'm <laughs> sitting there and I'm, you know, I'm reading this and I'm like, if I just read it, it makes total sense. When I read it out loud, I'm like, oh God, this, this, this is just too many words in that sentence to get to the point. Yes. Or, you know, that, that verb just doesn't, you know, make the punch, you know? So no, I, I always, and that, that takes me, you know, sometimes a week or two that I'm sitting there and I'm reading, you need a nice quiet place. Don't have the TV on and just read it out loud. Do you narrate your own books or have you turned them into audiobooks yet? I have not done that. I've been encouraged to do that a lot. Yes. It's funny because a lot of friends and family or people that see me, I do a lot of, uh, we'll get to that um, podcast interviews to promote my book. They say, you know, with your accent, and, you know, it's a specific type of humor and it's a specific type of thing. I mean, I, I think someone like if you had a professional narrator isn't going to get the point across with my books. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I have that heavy New York City accent and I know the verbiage, the words, you know, I, I know when to put the put put an ending on something. Yeah, I, it seems like you might have you've got the good connection and you might enjoy that. So I know some don't. And as as a narrator, it does scare you to wonder, am I going to bring this to life for the author the way they have it in their head? So, yeah, it's 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 kind of tricky. What's one of the parallels that you feel like go, coincide with writing and then your time that you spent at the police department? Well, when I was in, so my last 10 years, I was a detective in the auto crime division. So anything with stolen cars, chop shops, exporting, uh, exporting stolen vehicles out of the country. You, as a detective, you write a lot of reports. It's countless. There's different reports for surveillance. There's, there's reports for arrest. And, and there were, and uh, the longer I went into my NYPD career, the more, the more paperwork was required. And uh, a lot of times I just didn't see the point of doing something. And I would kind of spell it out in my writing. And my lieutenant would come back laughing. He would come back with a lengthy DD5 I read. And he goes, I just read your five. He goes, it's really funny. He goes, but there's no way I could submit this. <laughs> because, you know, he goes, it's funny. I get the point. He says, but they're not going to think it's, he goes, you know, one police plaza is not going to think this is funny. He goes, you know, you can kind of not smack so many people around in, 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 in your uh, in your writing. So I, I knew just by um, my supervisors, the way they used to get a kick out of what I wrote, I knew I had something like I never took a creative um, creative writing or journalism course in school, but I do have a way of saying things. And luckily for me, I can translate it in my writing because there's people that are really funny and they can't write worth it. You know, they can't write. Yeah. Right. Cool. Uh, so where do you plan to keep going? Do you just plan to keep turning out the books or what's what's on your short goal list? So as much as I love writing these NYPD books, sometimes I've got to take a break. So at my brother's encouragement, and my brother shows up in a lot of my books. Uh, my brother was also a member of the New York City Police Department. We kind of have a cantankerous relationship, although I love him. But in my books, I refer to him as Fredo Corleone, you know, from The Godfather, Michael's oh. dim-witted brother that often causes trouble or gets himself in trouble. And that is my younger brother. But um, to... Um, to take a break. So like my last book is called Confessions of a Catholic High School Graduate. It's got a, a, a drawing of a young boy getting chased out of a confessional, which really did happen to me. Um, no, I wasn't abused in Catholic high school, but I did have a, uh, a rambunctious and wild life as a teenager. And at my brother's urging, he says, you know, get away from the police stuff. Just he goes, he goes, our life story, and you know, our childhood would really make for a good book. And it's funny. And I said, it is, I said, but here's, here's the thing I was worried about putting out this last book. It's dedicating, a. well, when I write a book, again, it's $2,500. So I want to hit, I want to break even in my first year. That's, and if you want, we can get into marketing after this. But so soon as I put that book out, I'm on the clock. I want to get that money back and then go into the black the following year. I know my NYPD books are going to sell because- You've got all these true crime shows, you know, Law and Order, Chicago PD, NYPD Blue, Blue Bloods, all these shows. I know there's a niche out there that my books are going to sell. You know, when I change gears and write Confessions of a Catholic High School Graduate, it's almost like you go to a concert and your, fa and your favorite artist there and they're not playing the classics. They're playing the new album. And you're like, 
why did I just pay, yeah. you know, a hundred bucks for a ticket? And this moron is playing this song that I've never <laughs> heard before. Like, right. stick to what you know, man. So I did take a, made a left turn and wrote this. And it was a lot of fun for me, but you know what? I needed the break. And now I'm, I've gotten back to writing about the New York City Police Department. All right. So quickly, what are, what's a, your number one quick tip for marketing for people starting out? If you're going to write a book and you want to be successful, it's going to affect your personality because you have to be willing to put yourself out there. You can have the greatest story, the funniest book in the world, and if nobody knows about it, you've got nothing. So one of the disadvantages of being a self-published author is everything's on you, but you control everything. So you can control where you put your book and you know, you don't want to spend a lot of money on advertising because a lot of it is nonsense. Stay away from these companies that say they're going to they're going to advertise you. But they're not. You have to do it. So for me, I realized quickly, in addition to creating a Facebook page, like an author page, a Twitter account, an Instagram account, those things work. If you know how to market it, you got to keep on it daily. But the number one thing to sell your books is you're going to have to become an Internet personality. You're going to have to learn how to do interviews. You're going to have, if you're shy, you got to overcome that. You know, the last thing in the world I wanted to do is, is, is come on, go on the internet and, and hawk my books. But now you can't shut me up because I realize it works. Yeah. You know, I do between five and 10 podcasts, radio or television interviews a week. Wow. So, I mean, that takes up a third of my time scheduling it. People cancel, but you've got to be willing to put yourself out there and speak to people like yourself that are nice enough to put you on their forums. And, you know, I'm a true crime comedic author. So that's what I seek. I, I seek people with true crime shows, um, current events, writer shows, and be prepared. You know, when you're going to go on someone's show and they're giving you that opportunity, I mean, right in front of me, I've got tons of notes all over the place with topics. So if you were going to ask me questions about my book, I've got go-to things, you know, yes. you don't want to sit and go, um, you know, you can right. shoot yourself with a, you know, it, it's almost worse. You know, yeah. if you go into the store and you see a nice bottle of wine with a creative cover, you're like, oh, I'm going to take a chance on that one. If someone tells you it sucks or, you know, you, you, you already previously tried it, you're like, nah, I don't think so. So make yourself interesting and, you know, be professional when you do these interviews. It seems like you've got a lot to talk about. I hope you'll come back when you're ready to share about your new book, the different genre, and tell people where they can go right now to start reading your series. Sure. All my books, if you go on Amazon Books, just go uh, type in Vic, V-I-C, Ferrari, like the car. Um, I've got six books, four of which are NYPD themed. They're they're all they're no, there's no beginning middle and end in my books they're just chapters with short stories about the funny and ridiculous things that happen in the new york city police department all my all my paperbacks are ten dollars i try to keep the price point low they're about 250 pages they make great stocking stuffers and they're all 2.99 ebook download awesome awesome well thank you for sharing i appreciate it very much vic ferrari thank you trina so much i really appreciate it have a great one and come back and see us. Thank you.